going to go ahead now. Hi everyone, hope you're having a good time so far. Our next speaker is Josh Clark from UCD Library with his talk, Developing a Quality Library Marketing Mix, which will give us an overview of the efforts of UCD to, in their new approach to marketing the library. Josh has been working at UCD Library since 2004. For eight years, he worked as the liaison librarian responsible for geological sciences, mathematics, and physics. And then in 2012, the library established a communications and outreach unit, and he took on the role of outreach librarian. He has responsibility for maintaining and updating the library's websites and social media channels, and for designing and distributing library promotions. Uh, prior to working in UCD, Josh also worked in law firm Morrison and Forster, and in San Francisco Public Library. And his professional interests include social media marketing for academic libraries, and how mobile technologies can be used for library services. Um, so I'll ask you to give, me a warm, give Josh a warm welcome in this talk. Thanks for that. Um, some of you might have heard me talk before. I was at Connell last year talking about outreach as well. So it seems to be a popular subject. Um, we've heard a lot from Americans today. Here's one more uh, from San Francisco. Uh, I've been here about 15 years now, though. Um, OK, so I'm talking about our outreach unit at UCD Library, which is, is somewhat of a unique uh, uh, development um, for academic libraries, I believe, in Ireland, to have a dedicated outreach unit. I understand that Galway is uh, planning something like that as well. Um, what I'm talking about today are three uh, main aims about what we're about, basically. Um, outreach unit was uh, formed in 2012 with uh, three key aims basically to convey key content to our target audience, which is the UCD community, um, and uh, to raise the image of the library by raising the quality of the marketing product that we produce as well. Um, and also to increase awareness across the campus and to a wider uh, library community or wider community around UCD and in Dublin. And uh, no, uh, no better time than this for 1916, which I'm sure by the end of the year, everybody's going to be uh, tapped out. I know I will. Um, OK, so we had a big uh, shakeup in about 2011, 2012. And uh, this, this outreach unit was uh, established with the grand number of two people uh, involved. Um, we recently had a quality review report last year. And the, uh, we got a commendation from the quality uh, review group saying the establishment of an outreach team has energized and facilitated greater strategic commitment to effective user communication. So I think we have made great strides in, in how we present ourselves to our community. Um, like I said, it was a two-person unit that was set up in 2012. Um, we have had assistance from a library assistant who is also a graphic designer, so it's an interesting role. Uh, right now it's vacant, but we're hoping to uh, hire someone soon. We're having interviews next week, actually, to try to find a good graphic designer. This, this, is, this is a main focus of our, of, our, um, of our work as an outreach unit. And we're also directed by an outreach coordination group, which was also set up from all the different units in the library. So uh, the, the group kind of directs what we're going to promote, what, what kind of things we're going to put on the radar for our users. So a lot of this involves planning, of course. Uh, myself and my colleague, Roz Pan, who's in the back there, didn't want to go to a different talk for some reason. Um, she, uh, we worked closely together, and there's a lot of planning involved. Uh, lots of uh, uh, meetings between the two of us to find out where we are, what we're promoting that month, that week, uh, over the next few months. Um, so a lot of planning is, uh, is something that we, um, that we need to do. So we have weekly meetings, like I said. Um, we have a, a, a Google calendar, so we're, uh, we're giving our information to Google. Um, and so we have a lot of different things, always something on the horizon to promote, always something to keep promoting. So it's a never ending cycle. So uh, first of all, our online platforms. Now in 2011, we re totally revamped our website and uh, we came up with a new design and that was kind of the precursor for all of our different online platforms. Uh, so our website now has been going since about 2011, the way it looks now. Uh, we have our news on there. We have a, a rolling graphic that tries to highlight different things that are coming up, different exhibitions and things. Um, we also have implemented LibGuides in the last couple of years. So I know a lot of you are familiar with LibGuides. That, that is, uh, we increasingly push more content into our LibGuides. So the website, in, in a way, is becoming almost a skin or a platform to go to other platforms uh, with more content. 
So we do have over 70 guides now in LibGuides, so uh, that, that is always expanding into niche areas for researchers. Um, software, uh, a new software guide that we just uh, produced recently. So our, our online platforms are constantly under review. Uh, we've recently taken in UCD archives as well and, UCD, and the National Folklore Collection of UCD, so they're under the library umbrella now and they have their own separate websites as well. So this will be under review in the next year or so uh, as to the design and the direction that we're going to take with it. Social media plays a big part of my role. Um, I'm always constantly monitoring uh, social media, especially the big three that, we've, that we're involved with, which is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we, have, uh, we have looked at other ones like Foursquare, but we've decided to just stick with the three for now. Um, we're very active on Twitter, actually, so um, I'm constantly monitoring Twitter. It's a great feedback tool, too, to find out what students are saying about us. Uh, not always good, but, um, you know, I try to save all the tweets I, I get from students, and some of them are priceless. Anyway, um, so, so we're constantly pushing out information on Twitter. We're doing graphics for Twitter to kind of emphasize what we're saying. I'm constantly doing graphics. Like, I've become uh, skilled in Adobe, so uh, that's why we need a graphic designer, because it, it's, uh, it's, it's a daunting task, to be sure. Uh, we're on Facebook, like I said. Instagram, um, we're, we're getting more and more into Instagram. We try to keep that fresh. Uh, students are always uh, um, posting things to us and other units on campus as well. Uh, we use other platforms as well. We use SlideShare for staff presentations, such as this one. We put it into SlideShare, and sometimes we embed it in our website. Uh, we try to keep that up so that uh, people can see our staff publications, the two or three people that are interested. Um, uh, we, we use Picasa Gallery, the Google Picasa, again, Google, um, uh, to put up all of our online, uh, our, our photos, public and private. So we do have a staff gallery as well for retirements and things like that. So this is part of our internal communications as well. So we've, uh, we've kept up our um, gallery so people can see what we're doing, different launches and things. Uh, we've revived our blog. We, we used to have a uh, newsletter that went out to staff um, quarterly, and we've decided to scrap it in favor of a blog, which is constantly being updated by Roz uh, as to different events and things that are happening, which emphasizes what we're doing and gives us a bit more space than maybe Twitter, 140 characters, soon to be 10,000, which is crazy. Um, but anyway, we try to keep the blog fresh and keep people up to date. Um, design is a big part of what we do, like I say. Uh, uh, having a graphic designer is priceless. And um, we do use Adobe. Uh, when it comes to graphic design, though, it, it seems to be given short shrift by libraries that we can see, maybe not public libraries in certain places. But um, uh, considering that's a big part of your visual identity, um, uh, graphics design in libraries, uh, yeah, it, it seems to be um, not as uh, emphasized as in some other uh, sectors. Um, we have different options. There's different options, of course. If you're in an academic library, you can um, you can have everyone do their own thing. Different units. You know, you have your client services, your collections. Everybody's doing their own thing, creating their own guides. Everything looks different, so you don't want that. Um, that's what we used to do. So we try to unify our look. Another option is to have a central design team at UCD. That's not an option. We don't have a central design team. You can outsource your uh, graphics uh, to, to some other place, but I mean, that's expensive. So what we've gone in, in is to upskill our staff, to hire a library assistant who has the skills. Uh, and I've, up, I've upskilled myself. I've taken a, a course in uh, desktop publishing and uh, graphic design. So um, I'm a bit more au fait with the uh, products that we use now. Um, and uh, like going back to this quality review report from last year, uh, we got another commendation. High quality and range of library publicity, publicity materials has been recognized. Big high five on that one. Um, I think we've uh, really come a long way when it comes to our visual identity um, and what we, what we push out. We get a lot of good positive responses from students about, and, and staff especially, about our, um, our designs and, and conveying our, our message. Um, these are just a, a sampling of some of the posters that have been produced. And it's not only just printed posters, these are all graphics as well that are sized for different things, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You have to, everything has to be sized differently. First, you have to have your concept, you have to have the idea, you have to find the graphics, you have to have the skills, you have to have the creativity to produce these things. 
So each one is, uh, we, we, we like, of course, some of them more than others, but, um, but I think we've, we've come a long way in, in how we produce, uh, how we portray ourselves to our target audience. Um, sometimes, still, external designers are used. Um, of course, this is an expensive option, but for big launch events, like uh, recently we've done, uh, we've had a Kevin Barry launch, Ke Kevin Barry collection from UCD Archives. We've uh, digitized that in the UCD Digital Library. You can go there and find uh, some of the artifacts or some of the items that he owned. Um, and um, so we've, we've, we hired an external designer for this. Sometimes uh, there's a disconnect be between units in, within the library of what's needed, though, because if you get these panels, uh, these nice panels that are now in the DLR lexicon, you can go and view them there. Um, you also have the accompanying web graphics. You have to have the, the brochure. We got the booklet done. Uh, there's a bookmark. There's posters. There was a, a formal invite that had graphics within it that was emailed out. So there's a lot involved when it comes to doing a new promotion. And uh, we're involved in all these aspects. And we also try to achieve a uni unified design when it comes to um, our, our visual identity. Uh, we've gone with these concentric circles, which is a vague Celtic reference. Uh, uh, think Newgrange, maybe. Um, we, we, we've been going with this for the last couple of years, but it's due for a review. We're trying to come up with something maybe a bit more uh, unusual or something that, that might catch the eye better. But whenever we produce a poster or something on the web, we try to include these circles. It's become kind of a library thing from, from forms, application forms, to posters, to guides, PDF guides, online guides. Everything try, we try to keep uh, within this visual brand. We have a multi-channel approach, of course, when we promote something, not only uh, the website, but you would, um, you would go out to the wider campus. There's an e-zine for students and staff, which we are involved in. Uh, we send stuff to them so that it gets out there to our, to our users. Um, our, we have plasma screens within the library. That, that visual identity is up there. Whatever we promote, there's always a graphic that looks the same as the poster um, on Twitter, Facebook. Everything has different dimensions too. So if you get something that's just a poster, you've got to you've got to manipulate it and make it into you know a design for Twitter and all this. So that takes a lot of time. And we have, of course, our showcase homepage graphic, which uh, has to be done as well. Um, we also sometimes, if it's a big launch or something, we'll have uh, we'll go out to the wider um, media, which includes a uh, well. We have a library news page. There'll be something there. That's yet another little graphic that has to be sized. We put things in lib guides. We have campus plasmas all over campus, so I have to send things in yet another set of dimensions to to a communications officer. Uh, a lot of times we have those pop-up banners that you see, those seven feet tall banners. We do those. Uh, mailing lists, like I said, formal invites to different events that have to be uh, done up. Um, the campus magazine, UCD Today, uh, and then a blog entry as well. So there's a lot involved when it comes to doing a promotion. Um, we also like to try to uh, um, showcase the value of what we do, and we're trying to get more into facts and figures. We've gone with something called if Infogram, which one, some of you might be familiar with. Uh, it's a way of visualizing your data, Jane. and um, so it's, it's a way of showing the statistics in a, in a visual way, which might, might make people more interested. So we've gone, gone into Infogram. That's a project that uh, Roz has been heavily involved with. And, um, and so you can see how it makes pretty uh, graphs and things like that that people might want to view. Uh, we're going to do some further development with Infogram as well as other things. Uh, these are also slides, uh, examples of slides that we put up on our plasma screens every month to show the previous month's statistics. Just, just short, sharp st statistics that pe people might be interested in or might impress people. Number of hours spent in the library, uh, number of people who visited. Of course, this is December, so that's one of the busiest months. Um, laptop loans, things like that. And then you can see a few graphics there of just some key uh, facts for the year that people might be interested in. <coughs> it's always about visual. It's about vi being visual with um, what we're trying to do. We have a number of promotional cycles, and these things are uh, determined by the outreach coordination group that I mentioned before. What are we going to promote throughout the year? Every month we have a monthly promotion. So we have the posters, um, A2 posters that we get printed in-house, um, and then all the web graphics that go along with it. So we're promoting things like um, 
Uh, you know, uh, around exam time, we'll have study tips, and uh, in, in February, we're doing a Valentine's theme, Love Your Library, with a big heart, which I didn't show, I should have. Um, <laughs> things like that. So it's a constant uh, bit of promotion, not only just the posters, but you're tweeting these things out on a regular basis, you're trying to get, uh, you're trying to keep up with Instagram, you're trying to keep up with Facebook. So it's just a lot, a lot going on all the time, and a lot of it has to do with this visual identity. Uh, we also have something called the Library Spotlight, which in reality is kind of a modest uh, attempt to try to highlight some of our collections. We have a space in the James Joyce Library, which is the main library on campus, where we highlight some of the books in our collection. Sometimes we uh, pick up a theme, um, and sometimes we work with other uh, units on campus, schools, to promote a certain part of the collection, like Reading 1916 was the latest, uh, highlighting books in our collection that uh, involved uh, with 1916. Um, and we have a LibGuide as well, which is a spotlight LibGuide, which is what we point, to, pe point people to on the web, um, the URL, so they can go and read more about what we're trying to promote. And we also put in uh, book records in there so they can click on and go to the catalog, or they can browse the actual physical collection, which you can see there. We would like to expand that in some way because it's kind of hidden in a way, uh, just sitting there uh, with a, a modest little bookshelf, display shelf, and a, and a poster or two. Um, collaboration, we have tried to collaborate more with units on campus and in the wider community. Um, uh, recently, we had Library Ireland Week in November, and uh, we teamed up with one of the youth student societies, Draw Sock, the artists on campus, and we tried to get people to submit ideas for a new library book bag that we could sell later. Um, so we did get a number of entries, not as many as you would think, but, but we did get a number of entries to go through. So there was a lot, of, uh, a, lot of involved, a lot of promotional involvement there, so we had to come up with the graphics, we had to tweet them out, we had to team up with the, 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 the society to get people on board. And also we, um, the School of English got involved at, as well, and they had, um, they had talks in the library, which weren't well attended, so this is something uh, we could work on and, and try to improve. Um, you can see Colin Barrett there, the author of Young Skins, he came into the library. The Irish short story was one of our spotlights, library spotlights, so he came in, got a picture with him, with his book, and uh, you can see the, some of the members of the school, uh, the School of English there as well. So we try to tie in, uh, we had something called UCD Authors, which was a promotional um, uh, thing that we had with uh, different authors on campus who came out with a new book. We tried to highlight their book as well as other uh, themed um, bits from our collection. Writers with Pride, the LGBTQ community, we had a, a big involvement with them um, in choosing books that, that people could view and uh, we had a little launch event as well for it. Um, so internal communications is another part of our remit, something we, we, um, we are constantly trying to work on. Um, we have annual library staff day in January, right when people come back from Christmas. So uh, we, we, get, uh, we try to get people from uh, the library to come in and talk about what they're doing. We get external speakers as well, people from on campus that might be working on a project like the Walking 1916 app that, uh, that they've been working on. Um, on campus, things like that. We have a library staff intranet, which we moved into LibGuide, so we have a weekly update that goes out to staff every Monday to kind of you know, keep, keep our staff informed on what's happening, and anybody can submit to that with things they're doing, so we put that out. So there's a number of ways we're trying to improve the internal communications. Of course, uh, it's not always, uh, you know, everybody always complains about internal communications. I didn't know what was going on, and, you know, so, so we're always uh, we're trying to improve that. Um, user feedback, this is a big area and something we need to do better on, I think. Um, the feedback loop, trying to figure out what people want and then, and then um, trying to deliver. We, we're involved with LibQual, like a lot of other libraries, um, so we're coming up on a new LibQual um, uh, period here in March. So that's gonna be a big promotional event and we're gonna to have to try to give incentives to the students to fill out the survey and everything. So you can see that we had, a, we had a set up like road shows where we have laptops set up and everything for people to do the survey then and then we have an incentive, win a iPad, you know, things like that. So we're, we're involved in those kind of uh, um, feedback uh, cycles. Um, we also uh, try to put on our website uh, various statistics that, um, 
uh, from surveys that we do. We recently did a survey with non-traditional students, so we need to constantly do this. It's something that's hard to get pinned down when you have so many daily things coming at you all the time. So um, we, we really could improve in this area because we haven't really analyzed the data from feedback sessions to find out how we're doing and if what we're doing is the right way to go, really. Um, we're involved in projects as well. Uh, over the years that we've been, um, that we've, after we've been set up, we, we did this ANLTC sweats. Um, we won this research bursary. Uh, to do a report on mobile apps in libraries and where, um, where that is uh, amongst Irish academic libraries. So we produced that report in, in 2014. Um, uh, we also recently had an internal email standardization project trying to get everybody on the same page with how their uh, email footer looks like. You know, people would be putting, putting their own little pictures in there and things like that. So we tried to standardize those kind of things with our Twitter URL and our website URL. So that was something we did, and the Infogram project, like I mentioned before, um, and so we're involved in that. Um, we want to try to get more involved in multimedia tools, and I know Manuth was talking at, at Connell about Powtoon, so these kind of things uh, we want to explore a bit more to try to push the envelope when it comes to how we promote ourselves. Um, it, we, we have an e-learning group on, in the library which produces YouTube tutorials and videos, so Powtoon might be another, uh, um, you know, arrow in the uh, quiver uh, to, um, for us to, to promote ourselves. And more infographics ex exploration, this will be helped uh, when we get a new uh, designer, hopefully. Um, Maintaining and developing our PDF guide. Now this is a, uh, seems maybe a little antiquated, but uh, we have pushed a lot of our content into LibGuides. So we have a lot of different guides now, like I said, over 70 guides in niche areas for researchers on cultural heritage, um, on, on user, you know, things like uh, borrowing books and things like that. Um, so we've gone back to our PDF guides and we've weeded through them um, to go through and uh, try to, um, try to weed out the ones that aren't being used or being viewed or finding that the content is out of date, things like that. We're also coming up with a family of guides, so we're coming up with different families like a cultural heritage family, uh, research services family, now that we have a research, uh, dedicated research support unit for postgraduates and staff um, and postdocs. So we're trying to unify these guides, give them a certain visual identity, and, and print them, actually, because people want a printed guide in their hands when they go out to uh, sell their services among, amongst the, the target audience. We've, uh, we're, we're now involved in doing a 1916 guide, which kind of sums up all of the uh, collections we have amongst our special collections, uh, UCD archives, and the National Folklore Collections. So this is a formidable uh, a, a bunch of uh, information and data that we have that we need to let people know we have. So we're working in Adobe to create these slick looking guides that fold out and um, so that's something that we didn't have before. It's good to have these things to hand so we really really need to look at that and we're doing that. Um, the future, what we want to do is um, we want to maybe foray if the money is there, which at the moment it really isn't, but we want to get into touch screens, video walls, things like that if we can. That would be the ideal uh, scenario for a lot of our exhibitions that we have. Um, we're, we're getting involved in Google Cult Cultural Institute. Uh, we need to push something out on that now that we've joined them. Um, so uh, there's pressure there to, put, to produce something. Um, and with the decade of centenaries, there's going to be many things to promote over the next 10 years or eight years now. Um, so yeah, and, and um, one of the recommendations of the library quality review group uh, was that we should try to create new roles for not only graphic design, but web development, advanced web development, people who have coding skills, things like that. We do have a library IT team, but they're busy with the catalog and other things like that. So. It would be nice to have somebody who could do these advanced, um, uh, uh, advanced things that, that involve coding. So that's something we would look at. And of course, the user feedback element, what I was saying that we've kind of, kind of not done as, uh, as much or enough of uh, an analysis of those, uh, of those findings that we need to do. So that's uh, something that 
that's, uh, that's, that's constantly on the horizon. It gets pushed with all of the, uh, the little things people need, like signs. I need a sign for this. I need a sign for that. You need to announce this on the website. You need a graphic for that. I mean, it's just incredible. So this is me um, with the uh, tsunami coming up behind me. So uh, <laughs> I think on that note, um, that'll do it. So uh, that's us, outreach. Uh, if anybody's thinking of creating an outreach unit, uh, feel free to, to talk to us since we've, we've had some experience over the last couple of years of what's involved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, um, we never really know the budget. It's kind of, uh, if something comes up, the money is found somehow, but it is kind of a willy-nilly thing, and I don't really know much about the budget. My, my colleague, Roz, <laughs> would be more in the budget area, but um, we're constantly coming out. There's always something that comes up that co requires money, and it's funny because uh, a lot of times you'll say, oh, there's no money, and then all of a sudden money appears when, it, when it's needed. So um, I, I, when it comes to the budget, I, I know that we, we're constant. Uh, some of our biggest expenses are, are, are uh, constant expenses are these print, print jobs. We, we print in-house, but it costs. So we're printing out posters and things like that. And then if there's an external designer involved for a big launch, that, that's another, uh, come, the money comes from another area. So, so the, the, when it comes to the budget, I don't really know exactly how that works, but uh, it seems um, that we're, you know, we're, we, we <laughs> In some ways, to me, it's willy-nilly how, it, how the money comes about. But um, when, it, when it's needed, to, it, it's there. It, it's, 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 it's funny because we have a, we have a financial person on, on the team who's always berating us for spending money. But um, a lot of times, these things they need to go out, you know? Um, as far as the planning, like I said, we have this group that, that meets not very often. Uh, actually, should probably meet more often. but. Um, where we try to plan out the year for um, what we're going to promote, at least the monthly promotions, the spotlights that I talked about. Um, we work closely with our digital library, and they're always constantly launching a new collection. So that's something that takes priority in uh, when they need publicity, you know, and that we have a we have a whole documentation of how the publicity is going to be formed up and where it's going to go. That's, yeah. You know, yeah, we have a list of emails. We have a list of contacts throughout uh, Ireland and beyond of wh who we contact when these new collections come out. We work with the digital library. They have their own Twitter account as well, so they're promoting their materials. We're helping them to promote. If there's, a, if there's an event that launches it, then we, we're heavily involved in that. So um, these things, uh, we work with digital library on their, they're constantly uh, producing the, these new collections, so that's a big part of it as well. So, um, yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah, it's not always us that makes the decisions about what what's going to be um, promoted. You know, especially when it comes to the larger. Uh, the larger publicity making kind of uh, things like these collections, these digital collections that are culturally um, viable, culturally valuable. Um, so a lot of times we're not as involved in that decision making process. We're told we need to promote this, we'll do it. So um, when it comes to the monthly promotions, the things like that for the users, the actual practical stuff, uh, we're, we're, we're very involved in how and um, what's going to be done. Um, with with advice with advice and input from other units, so
my students absolutely they get through the course with your good guides. But one question I would have is how much involvement do you have with students in, in terms of developing outreach information? Do you have any students who work on it? Yeah, it's funny because um, we, we do the summer intern project before before students take up their, their MLIS or their HDIP in, in the SILS uh, department there on UC, in UCD. So we're involved in that with the students and we get feedback from them in that way. Uh, we're recently involved in something called the Digital Ambassadors Program, which is the te teach UCD Teaching and Learning has come up with. So it's, it's taking a number of students who have um, you know expressed enthusiasm and have some skills to work with us on different projects that we want to do. So um, we're going to have somebody come in and do some tw tweeting and, and uh, some uh, Instagram posts for us from the student perspective, hopefully. So we'll kind of get that element. Uh, like I say, I monitor Twitter as well a lot. And you get a lot of comments, especially around exam time. A lot of it's about practical stuff, like it's always cold in the library, things like that. But we, we try to get involved more in the, with the students. Uh, a year or more ago, we tried to get a kind of a, a group, uh, a feedback group together to try to get you know go-to students that we could go to and say, uh, we, we're thinking of doing this. What do you think? But that didn't really work. It didn't. It didn't happen. So we're trying to see how we can get the students involved. You know, they, they're good at complaining, and 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 they we do get comments as compliments as well. But but you you don't find them coming to us to say. Uh, we want to, can you do this or, you know. So, I mean, we do have this lib, the LibQual survey, which we get a lot of comments back on, so we kind of analyze those as well. But, um, yeah, more student involvement would be great. Uh, from the, uh, like I said, uh, we need more feedback. Uh, well, there's always great kids coming out of these teams that are writing workshops. Yeah. Oh yeah, and now we have the units, the math support center and the writing support center within the library, yeah. and they both said that it's increased their traffic. So we've got those units within our remit as well. I mean, they're separate, but we we take care of their promotion. We do things for them, so it's good to have those other units come into the library as well. So there has been more collaboration over the last year, couple of years, but a lot more can be done. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thanks very much, Josh. Um, we're actually at lunchtime now, so we can all head out to the restaurant for um. Uh, soups and sandwiches and teas and coffees. Um, we have an hour for lunch, so um, you can use a spare time to look around the poster exhibition and maybe vote for your favorite poster. And there's also our sponsors are in the next room. And don't forget about our really good prize for our sponsor quiz. Um, to be in a chance for that, just go around, ask the questions, chat up the sponsors and, and submit your form. Thanks very much. And uh, after lunch, we have uh, parallel sessions again. So please check the program to see where you're meant to be. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.